What's going on, FG fam? Today, I am bringing you something that could be a potential series on the channel, depending on how episode one goes. If you want it to be a series, make sure you drop a like on the video after you've done watching it. Make sure you subscribe if you're brand new to the channel and you found the channel just today with this video. If you want to see it, make sure you let me know in the comments section below, and we'll see if this actually becomes a series on the channel, but we are doing college football revamped we are doing a troy dynasty and we're doing it right now so don't go anywhere Well, here we are to start a potential brand new series here on the channel on College Football Revamp. Now, I have this on my PC, but we are using PlayStation buttons, so you will recognize PS3 type gameplay. But our head coach will be D'Angelo Bernard of the Cincinnati Bengals franchise fame, the wide receiver and potential Hall of Famer. I mean, I think he's a channel Hall of Famer already, but who knows what he would have done in his career had it continued, and he will be taking over the Troy Trojans in this game. So we are going to be starting a college football revamp series We'll see if this is something that will continue on the channel. That is going to be up to you guys. Make sure you drop as many likes as humanly possible. Leave as many comments as humanly possible. Make sure you answer all the questions I ask in the comments section below because that is how you'll answer more, you know, get more comments and get this ball rolling so that this could be the a big series on the channel. It could potentially bring in some growth, but that's going to be up to you. Here we go. These are the sliders and the penalty things that we are running with. This is all J-Kit sliders on Operation Sports. I will leave a link in the description below for them so that you can check them out yourself if you would like to use them. So J-Kit sliders on NCAA football for college football revamped. Here is... Our Troy Trojans, D'Angelo Bernard, looking to take the job. Here we go. This is going to be a fun one now. Troy has new uniforms in college football revamp, so that is partly the reason why I am taking them. Also because I don't think anyone's doing a Troy rebuild on college football revamped on YouTube right now. So I want to be the first to get to one team here. Another one that I had thought of was potentially Syracuse, but I kind of did them on Twitch for a little bit. And, you know, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to take a pretty poor team and potentially do multiple seasons here. Quite a lot of seasons. We'll see. I don't know. Again, it's up to you guys as to whether this becomes a series or not. But here we are. This is what our roster's looking like. And we're going through red shirts right now. And I just don't see a lot of people really worth redshirting. We have a ton of receivers in the building, so I would like the seniors to move on. We've got a couple of freshmen down here we can redshirt, potentially get them to be better because 80 speed isn't really going to cut it for my style of play. We're going to redshirt both freshmen left tackles. I decided not to redshirt the freshman center. We will redshirt the freshman right tackle. This way we can get a lot of potentially good O-linemen, potentially for next year, I'm saying potentially a lot, but as long as they go up in training in the offseason, we'll have a chance to have a lot of really good tackles on the team, which would definitely help out. And so here we continue. Now this corner here, Josh Brown, we can redshirt him. We're going to. Our corners are not incredibly deep. We do have a lot of safeties, though, that could fill in as corners. Should we need them to? Because I'd rather redshirt the freshman and get him to become better for next year and get that extra year of training under his belt. So now, as we reorder the dev chart, there are only two quarterbacks really that could play, and they say to start Jacob Free, but I don't like his power and accuracy combination compared to Gunnar Watson. So we're going to start the sophomore redshirt, Gunnar Watson. Kamani Vidal, as a true freshman right now, I think he does give us the best opportunity. He is the fastest running back we could get and potentially the best all-around running back that we can have. 
Kalen Geiger is an impact player. Now, Reggie Todd is as well, but at 78 speed, that is really not a guy that I want to really put forth as a star on the offensive side. So we have 87 speed, 83 speed, and 87 speed Clark, Eford, and Whittemore going to be the 2, 3, and 4 at receiver. Now, continuing on through our offensive line, it is not a very good offensive line, but it could be a better offensive line next year. Again, we have a lot of freshmen that will be redshirted. Our defensive line doesn't look all that impressive either, but we do have some good outside linebackers here. Robertson, Wisenhunt will be back up for all three linebacking positions. Jaboner, that is a very weird name. Jabonier, I, I don't really know how I'm going to say that name without making it hilarious and wanting to laugh, but that guy, he is a good player as well on the right outside linebacker position. Again, our corners are not deep. We're pretty good for safeties, though. We're going to use two strong safeties, starting at free safety and strong safety. Harris will not be the backup at strong safety. We will have our Slocum who would factor to be the starting free safety, but I would rather use both of our strong, strong safeties who happen to be pretty darn good players. Eford will be our kick returner and punt returner this season. We'll have Clark and we'll have Whittemore there as well because they are fast and I, you know, fast, speedy return men are always better in my opinion. So we will take Eford to return at both spots. Now taking a look at our schedule. Now this is a pretty tough schedule we're opening up with. Obviously it's only a C because we are in the Sun Belt Conference, but we are going to be playing number eight Florida on the road, number 25 Tennessee on the road. We are going to host the Virginia Cavaliers. So we're playing a pretty tough out of conference schedule. A lot of big teams we're looking to get money from them potentially either coming into our stadium or us going to theirs to get an ass whooping we'll see what ends up happening though maybe we can pull off an upset who knows you never can tell when playing this game so there is our schedule obviously in the sun belt now here's the interesting part so you guys a long time ago in a community post put in some players not knowing what they were going to be for and um, I chose some of them here. So Jake Pride will be a prospect wide receiver. We will have Ladorian Bridges as a prospect middle linebacker. Another thing that I want to announce and plug is that anybody who is a channel member that put in a player when I asked in this community post automatically got their player in. And not only got their player in, but they got a very good player as well. So they will potentially be five-star prospects as Archibald, the quarterback, is an 82 overall. He is a channel member. Thank you, Bear, for all of your support. It's very much appreciated. So Rigoberto Ramirez Jr. will be a defensive tackle at a 78 overall. Then we have Derek Vance, another channel member. He is going to be a running back. What I basically did to choose, I wanted to get uh, some all the prospects to be in a different position. So Derek Vance is a running back because his frame, the height and weight that he provided, kind of fit that. And he's an 84 overall. That's what you get for being a channel member. So if you guys want to be a channel member, there is a join button below this video. It is never required, but it is always greatly appreciated and can help push me towards that goal of being a full-time content creator for you guys. As Fabian Klink is in there, and we will now have Bob Fleming, of course, as well. Now, I chose Bob Fleming because the person who created him used to be a channel member, but is no more, so I did not make him the greatest overall that there is. Tyrell Jowers was chosen because, well, mod privilege for a little bit here. We chose Tyrell Jowers, and he is a 77 overall. Then I chose Jack Spencer, and the reason I chose him is because he was the only one to give me a tight end frame at six foot five, 245, so I needed a different position because too many people gave me frames of wide receivers or corners or safeties, so that's what we did. Looking at what we're going to need to pick up, we need a fullback, a couple of D-tackles, and a punter, so we will be recruiting that heavily. 
as you can see this is me kind of just going through looking at the interested prospects anybody who's interested is fair game for us so if they are interested in coming to troy i mean who are we to say no so we're gonna at least take a look and scout any of the three stars that are interested in our program and of course at positions of need we're gonna go crazy I always forget to turn this off, and I kind of did this time as well, as they filled my bore out from 32 to 35. Now is the fun part where we scout some players, and of course, none of the user prospects were interested in coming to Troy. Why would they be? But we will follow their careers and see where those guys do end up in the long run, so that'll be something interesting to see. And you will have, if this is something that actually continues, and is a series on the channel due to great support then we will also be having more years of more prospects and you guys will have another chance to get in this series later on so stay tuned and look out for that and of course if you want that to be the case again as i'm gonna say many times in this video it is completely up to you the likes watching the entire video not skipping a beat you know what i mean all of that kind of stuff goes to help and the sharing you can share it on twitter you can share it on facebook try to get your friends into the series and the more that this series helps grow the channel the more inclined i'm going to be to release it so we found a gem in guard tim leonard so that is a guy we are going to heavily be recruiting at the start of this season now comes week one and we have a bye week so we are just going to take a look at our recruiting we're going to do what we need to do there and then we'll take a look at the scores for week one too this is a long episode one one of the longer episode ones i've really ever come out with and that is because i want to provide you know a lot of action to you guys and a lot of good content so we continue to scout out guys we haven't we get a bus there so anton kane has no chance of playing for troy there is no shot that we want a guy like that all of these other d tackles are at least respectable and then we get a 69 nice nice jeff kelly pretty good hickman goes up four not bad corner we get one point there jack jones goes up five but still a 54 overall i put him on there because he had speed i knew he was a one star but i was hoping he would uh take a big jump forward and per per perhaps even be a gem that would be close to 60 overall because then I might take a chance on getting him. But didn't look like that was going to happen. We need punters, and Anthony Jordan's a bust, so that's not a punter I want to bring to my squad. Fullback, of course, we need. Sam Simmons goes down a point. Carl Cook goes down a point. Jamie Smith goes down one. Two down for Fenner. Brent Taylor goes down four. LaRue Walton goes down three. So a lot of these guys just aren't worth bringing in. Cedric Miller goes down five points, and Mark Moore is a plus eight gem. That is a guy I need to bring into this team. So we're going to try to get Mark Moore to come to the squad. Fenner, I don't know that it's going to be worth trying to get him. Tim Leonard, we are 100% going to put in 500 points every single week on. We're hoping to bring him to the squad. We're not on Carl Cook's list or Jamie Smith's list. So it's not going to really be worth putting points into them at this current time. Mark Moore, we don't have a big bonus on him. But man, we got to give it a shot. We got to hope nobody's trying to get him. Fontenot, we will try to get him. He's the best punter on our board at the moment. And like I said, we need to get a punter on this squad. So that we'll try to do. Jeff Kelly will get 500 points to start, as will Brendan Daniels. Trying to get some defensive and trench guys. Stan Cowan will get 500. And then Daryl Parham being one of the best receivers we have on our board. He'll get 500. And then we'll try to bring in that quarterback if we can get him. So looking at some scores for week one. I won't call out every score, but South Carolina over North Carolina in week number one. That had to be a pretty big matchup early on. Most teams playing FCS and tune-up schools in week one college football usc over hawaii rutgers over fresno state utah trounces utah state smu over texas tech in overtime it's a big win for smu penn state shellacking syracuse ohio state's shellacking buffalo michigan over central michigan louisiana killing arkansas that is a big win for ull 
then we have Colorado State over Colorado, 16-10 in overtime. Big game, Northwestern over Cal. Cincy over Purdue, big win for Cincy. Washington over Boise State. LSU over TCU and UCLA over Nevada. We'll look at the Sun Belt. South Alabama, Louisiana, Arkansas State, and Southern Miss all picking up dubs. Looking at the top 25, Clemson number one with Ohio State, Alabama, and Oklahoma rounding out the potential playoff teams. Yes, I will use the playoff mod to make sure that there is a playoff, college football playoff in this series the entire way through. So I want to make it immersive. I want to make it something that you respect the world that this is in and create our own little world with, of course, our created prospects. So look forward to some big things happening in this series, should it be something that actually continues. And again, it is up to you and your support for it. David McKinney looking like a pretty good player and looks like we have a chance to get him. So we'll give him 500 points. We'll see if we can bring him in. We haven't given any scholarships really out yet. Carl Cook doesn't look like he wants to come here. Neither does Jamie Smith. So it's not really going to be behoove us really to waste our time with them. Sam Simmons doesn't want to come here either. And neither does Cedric Miller. But Mark Moore is looking pretty good. We would like to recruit him heavily, as well as Kelly, Daniels, Cowan, Parham. That's all going pretty well. Cowan is uh, being heavily recruited by Marshall right now, but we'll see if we can make a move on that forefront. We are going to take off a couple of guys here. Andrew Davis. Don't know if we want to give him some more points. Daryl Martin we're a little bit behind on. 345 points behind FIU. So we're going to try to get Daryl Martin to come in here as well. Good center. We need center. And with a 210 bonus, it's going to be a little tough. We'll see. We might have to try to offer the scholarship as kind of like a last resort type of thing. So we will offer the scholarship to Daryl Martin. Now, week number two, we have already passed that as we had a bye week there as well. And again, calling out some big ones, Kentucky over Miami of Ohio, Northwestern over Syracuse. Syracuse drops to 0-2. Temple over Houston Clemson with a 66-7 score. They did play FCS, though. Cincinnati also playing FCS. Ohio State over San Diego State. Nebraska over Southern Miss. Missouri over Toledo. Florida over Miami, Florida, Illinois killing Rutgers, Tulsa over Rice, Notre Dame over Purdue, Baylor over Buffalo big time, UTEP over Colorado State in OT, Oklahoma beats West Virginia, and the only game in the Sun Belt was Tulane, 16-13 in overtime over ULM. So Tulane in a tough game. We'll take a look at the recap here. Tulane was down 10-3 at the half. They scored a touchdown into the second half, tied it into the fourth. They tied it going into OT, and they got the win, man. A slim one, but they get it done. Clemson, Ohio State, Bama, and Oklahoma, still your top four teams in the nation after week two. And you can see that Auburn takes a big fat L. They lose 31-24 in overtime at FAU. Justin Field, Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones, Kadarius Toney, and Isaiah Spiller are your top five for the Heisman race at the present time. We have three guys looking for a visit. Tim Leonard is one of them. And, man, do we really want to get this guy signed to the squad. So we'll go ahead and, of course, offer him a visit as well as Mark Fontenot because he'd be a hell of a punter for us. And Brendan Daniels, the defensive end. So looking pretty good. And our first official matchup, should this series be a thing, would be against the Arkansas State Red Wolves. So it would be quite the matchup. Arkansas State a little bit better than us. And this would be a fun one to begin the season with. So far, Arkansas State beat FCS Midwest 27-7. Here are their leaders. Murray, 77 yards, two touchdowns in that game. 75 receiving for Tyler. And we will have to watch out for those guys as Lane Hatcher leads the way at quarterback for Arkansas State. Jonathan Adams Jr. looks like a pretty rough receiver to try to defend. 89 breaking tackles at receiver. Holy heck. Their tight ends look really good as well. Their offensive line looks way better than anything we boast as well. 
Their defensive line leaves a little bit to be desired, but Forrest Merrill anchoring there. Rice at outside linebackers looking really good. They do have a boner at right outside linebackers, so got to watch out for that. Maybe they'll get a little overzealous. Their free safeties don't look very good, but they have enough strong safeties to cover that. I don't know. You guys let me know. How do you think a game against Arkansas State would go? Let me know in the comment section if you want to see this series continue. Make sure you let me know that in the comment section if you're interested in this type of content. Some college football. Potentially could see some players from this leading into a Madden 22 franchise. You kind of see where I'm going with that. But if you guys are interested, let me know because I need to know that if I'm going to get going on another series on the channel. I thank you guys very much. Links to the Discord and the Twitch are in the description below. And if you want to see more franchise, make sure you guys click right here at the end screen to see some more franchise. I feel you face